Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here again. Um, I first, well, I started working for Silver Bear exactly three years ago, almost to the day, and I came and presented here at, uh, at Manix Eurasia, I think on about my second day at work. So it's a pleasure to be back here again and to update you all on the progress we've made in the perceived difficult environment of, of Russia. Um, so I think without any further ado, some of you may have heard some of this story in the past. For, for all of you, I hope it's a bit of a refresher about what can be achieved. Um, first of all, we have probably one of the highest grades silver mines of anywhere. The 809 grams a ton there, that is a fully diluted um, overall um, mining grade for the open pit and the underground. It's a bit of a mis misprint there, it's a, that's, the, that's the overall. The, the open pit reserve grade is about 1,200 grams a ton. The open pit resource is, is about 1,500 grams a ton, but we allow about a 30% dilution for all of our resources when we convert them into reserves. Uh, so we have a fantastic asset in the, the, our first project, which is called Verticalny. Um, we have uh, grades in there going up beyond 10,000 grams a ton, which is off the scale of most geological models. We are very, very much advanced in terms of uh, construction, more than 85% complete now. We uh, are fully funded to get into production. Uh, you'll see some pictures shortly about how we've developed the project over the years, uh, over the three years since I joined. We will be in production, all things being real and, and realistic, uh, in the first quarter of next year. We have a good bunch of team, a good team on board now. I've got a great board, board of directors who are both uh, seasoned mining professionals as well as uh, seasoned financial um, advisors. And we have a fantastic exploration area. We have uh, over 500 square kilometers with at least sort of 15 known deposits and targets within our existing property. Uh, about five of those so far we've converted into 43101 resources and we will continue to develop more uh, resources as we go on. Plus, as you'll see, there's great potential in the whole area of Eastern Russia where we are to actually develop further. Uh, just in terms of the basic structure of the company, on the left-hand side there, you see our basic capital structure. Um, and, and down below, you'll see the shareholder base. What has happened recently is there has been a, a, a major uh, conversion event. Uh, our major shareholders converted uh, a large section of their debt into, into, into equ equity. Uh, this dilution event, obviously, is something which you know, it, it was likely to happen. Uh, it is something which we are currently working with to try to increase that amount of free float you see there, which is not what the market wants to see. Uh, we would like to get that free float, and we have the full support of our major shareholders back to about 40 to 50 percent. Uh, we have obviously great support from our two major shareholders. Both are uh, Russian-backed private equity funds. Um, they have provided all the project financing which we've needed during the course of the past three years and um, continue to support the project fully. Um, the two major team members as you see there, myself, um, and we have a recently appointed Russian CFO, meaning it's almost all the team now is, is Russian, I think apart from myself. Um, I, I'm a little lad from Scunthorpe in North Lincolnshire, so um, I've come a long way in the world. Uh, but project location in eastern Russia, uh, in the Republic of Saka, also called Yakutia. Um, all the little blue dots you see on the, on the map there are known large silver deposits, uh, most of which are available to anybody who wants to come along and, and take up the license. Uh, our Mangazeski project, the red dot there, is about 400 kilometers straight north from the uh, city of Yakutsk, which is the capital of Yakutia. Uh, we have access on a winter road uh, between the m months of January and April each year. Uh, we have to have a winter road because there's a very, very large river, you maybe can see more or less flowing through the area there, called the, the, the Lena River, which is about two or three kilometers wide in places, and there are no bridges over it, so we have to wait until it freezes over before we can actually drive anything across it. Of course, we do have the use of ferries during the, uh, in the summer months, uh, but the, road in the, the roads in the mountains uh, are also full of rivers and very difficult to cross um, during the, in the summer months. Uh, right next to our little well, red blob there is a small yellow blob called Arkachan. That is a known gold deposit. It is currently being explored extensively by 
the uh, Republic of uh, Saka's Geology Institute, and uh, we're actually doing all the sample preparation for them. So we know it's a fairly good deposit, and if there's anything worthwhile having, it's uh, very, very useful to us to use our existing infrastructure and look at uh, perhaps taking that license for that deposit too. Our existing exploration area, as I said, about 570 square kilometers. The ones highlighted in white are the known uh, resources we have, 43101 resources for. All the others are known deposits. Uh, we have massive potential for developing within our own property at the moment. We currently have a mining license over the area there called Verticalni, and that is the first deposit which we will be developing and bringing into production, and that is what we're doing right now, as you'll see. So we have uh, a, a great mining license. We have a fantastic exploration permit which gives us freedom to explore our property for the next seven years. Uh, we have great support from the uh, government of Yakutia, and uh, we have the backing of our shareholders, and, and we're building, we're going. Uh, since I joined the group in 2014, um, one of the objectives has been to look at increase in the resources. We had, uh, for very little money actually, we, we focused very much on where we could get most value for the limited amount of, for the least amount of work. We were extremely successful in achieving remodeling. You see this year we haven't done very much and that's more or less been a deliberate ploy. We just decided to focus all of our efforts to bringing our first mine into production. Uh, so next year hopefully we'll see that, uh, that resource line there improving once again to something more significant. Uh, basic resources, you see here the average grade of verticalny uh, is an indicated resource, uh, more than 1,200 grams a tonne. Uh, like I say, the open pit section, that is more than 1,500 grams a tonne. Um, the, the, the reserves you'll see there on the right-hand side from the feasibility study, uh, the open pit is also above 1,000 grams a tonne for the, um, for, the, for the mining reserve. So that is a, that's a fully diluted uh, reserve there. So we have um, obviously some other uh, inferred resources and some other indicated resources. So about 60 million ounces altogether in total at this point in time. But like I say, we're hoping to increase that significantly. At the bottom, you'll see we also have a, a small gold uh, deposit on our property, which we've also declared a resource for. Um, in terms of the grades, I mean, you'll see here, if we compare ourselves to other main producers around the world, and uh, I think you'll see that our, our reserve is actually significantly higher than what anybody else can actually say they've got. So we're, we're quite, quite proud of our property and our reserves. Um, yeah, it's an interesting thing about silver. I mean, it's, it's, it's a commodity as such as we see it, but it does seem to track more or less the gold price, unfortunately, which is, not, which is a bad thing. Because as you see there, if, if it tracked the actual you know, supply-demand curve, I think the silver price would be much more stable, and it should also be probably quite a bit higher. But it's something we have to live with in our, in our world, unfortunately. But silver is a very, very useful metal, and I think um, hopefully electric Vehicles will also see an increase in demand for, for silver, looking forward. Uh, the project itself, it's, it's, you look at that top line there, it's a remarkably small project, although you wouldn't believe it when you see the size of the processing plant. Um, only 110,000 tonnes per annum throughput, which is only 300 tonnes a day. Uh, however, when you have grades of you know, over 1,000 grams a tonne, that still means we're producing between 8 and 9 tonnes of silver each month. And as we have to fly all the silver off the site, you can imagine, you know, we, could, we, we couldn't actually probably fly much more than eight or nine tons off the site a month anyway, so. Um, current uh, life of mine production only about 20 million ounces. CapEx, 65 million, that's pretty well all sunk now. Uh, we've spent nearly all that money, but we have enough to get it into production. Cap cash costs, about uh, eight and a half dollars an ounce. Um, reserves they're given. <coughs> The IRR are still looking significantly good at nearly 50%, uh, an MPV of about 88 million, and payback is obviously very quick, uh, which also doesn't make getting financing very easy. So looking at the actual progress we've made, um, project 85% complete, we're well into cold commissioning now of the overall processing plant. The, the, the ball mill um, was cold commissioned actually in February this year. We've now commissioned it on, on waste rock as we have much of the initial part of the processing plant. Uh, we're very well advanced with, um, with, with the balance of the permitting and the balance of the production, uh, sort of commissioning work as well. Here we see a, an overview taken about two or three weeks ago. It starts snowing in 
July. You only finish it snowing in May, so uh, we don't have many months without snow. Uh, this is, you can see the, the, the project is extremely well advanced. Obviously, most of what happens occurs inside the processing building, so you can't see it there. But um, I was there again last week, and while outside at the moment, it's about minus 35, minus 40 degrees centigrade. Inside the process plant building, it's about plus 15 degrees. We have a boiler plant there. As you see, in fact, we have two boiler plants. One is actually a backup, uh, which keep the, the inside of the building warm, as well as all the other buildings as well. We have a full on-site laboratory, which is fully commissioned, and uh, it's in process of being accredited as well. But all the other facilities are ready to go. We are mining. We have been mining most of this year. We've already stockpiled approximately 12,000 tonnes of ore, with an average grade of about 900 grams a tonne. And as soon as we have all the, all the commissioning completed, as soon as we have all of our reagents on site on the new winter road, then we will be starting to produce silver. So progress we've made, just a few pictures here to show you how much we've, we've done in the last couple of years. Uh, we started doing initial foundation works um, in 2015, just after I joined. We did some upgrades to the, uh, to the um, infrastructure as well. 2016, we started, we got the steel structure on site on the Winter Road and put all, most of the process plant together. Uh, we then um, have developed the plant to the point now that we're into the final stages of hot commissioning and into production early next year. Uh, this is the fuel storage. We have to thousand tons of fuel on site. Um, this is all delivered again down the Winter Road each year. Our, our power supply is by diesel powered uh, generators. Um, just an example of the ingenuity here on the left hand side picture there is, is a 1,000 cubic meter fuel storage tank. But it's actually all rolled up to make it um, transportable down the Winter Road, as you see there. And then when it arrives on site, it's actually unrolled and just a single weld turns it into a 1,000 cubic meter tank. So it's quite, uh, they're, quite, they're quite cunning, those people out there. Uh, water supply, we take water from below the permafrost in the valleys. The permafrost is about uh, 250 meters deep. So we've got, we're taking water from below the permafrost level through two boreholes more than 250 meters deep. Uh, we have to keep the boreholes obviously heated to stop them freezing. And we then pump the water through an insulated and heated pipeline about four and a half kilometers up the hill uh, to where the processing plant and the infrastructure actually is. So one thing you may have noticed on the picture back there is that the whole plant and the whole operation is actually on top of the hill. Um, which means that we have an opportunity actually for using wind power uh, for generating uh, electricity we need in the future. But it's something which we're still investigating at the moment. Um, again, fuel storage facilities and water storage, similar sized tanks and facilities, all there, all constructed. The, um, the camp, on the left you see the original exploration camp, and on the right you see is the, the modern camp which we produce with two large dormitories to house about 150 people, which will be the permanent staff for the mining operation. Of course, they'll work on a shift rotation basis because uh, you know, it's, it's quite, quite a difficult environment to be there more than two or three months at a time, especially in winter. So open pit, um, the one on the top right is one I took last week, or Wednesday, or Thursday. Um, the open pit beginning to take shape, uh, drilling and blasting operations. We'll be mining about um, 3 million tonnes per year, the great majority of which obviously is waste material. Uh, only 110,000 tonnes of that is actually going to be uh, ore, but a very, very high grade. And we have ore already. I mean, the ore was basically outcropped on top of the mountain. And when you can, you can pick stuff up, pick samples from the surface of the mountain, you know, with about sort of 800 grams a tonne, you know you're onto a pretty good thing. So this is where we are at the moment, this is our future. We have, uh, by the way, the picture at the bottom is, is a herd of reindeer on our processing plant to show how, environmental, how environmentally friendly we are. Uh, we're actually in the middle of a reindeer herding environment. Um, our nearest neighbours are actually reindeer herders and we have a very good relationship with them and the reindeer. Um, so we began the project in 2015, moving it into production in the course of the next few months and then developing the open pit at the first deposit, Vertikalni. We then have a second open pit uh, available to start working on about five kilometers away, which we'll use the same processing plant for. And then we have the underground opportunity at the Vertikalni. Plus also we have all these other deposits which we can look at delivering to the existing processing plant. Some of them are a bit further away. 
um, and we will probably look at building a second processing plant or some of those other facilities as we develop. So we've, uh, I think we set out to do what we said we would do three years ago, that is to build a mine. Um, I think we've done it you know, as close as possible to the timeline we set out at that time. So we have um, a great asset, a great potential future, and a very sort of uh, economical mine about to come into production and it's fully funded to get there. So I think that's about it. Thank you very much. <laughs>